Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight to paint a real quick heart full, truck full of hearts. And this is such a fun thing to paint. It won't take very long. So for people who don't have two hours to sit through a painting class, this is going to be perfect. I love cars and trucks, but I especially love trucks. So I love um, painting the, the trucks. We did a fantastic one at Christmas time. And it's kind of sort of like that one, but I figure we'll do one every holiday. It's going to be great fun. So this is kind of what the um, the painting is going to look like. But I, I left it a little plain in the background because it's really important to us that you use your creativity and your imagination and make things what you would like them to be and just experiment and just and just go all out with it. So um I am going to be, uh, I have a free gift for everyone. If you'll just, this is, I'm going to do a complete class on this with the pattern and everything, a PDF and a video. And if you will just send me your email, I'll email all that to you. Um, and it's um, the two wine glasses with the wine spilling out of it. It actually is lots of fun to paint together with someone else, whether it's your significant other or one of your best friends or whatever. And if you get two canvases and paint them and put them together, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. So if you'll, um, like I said, if you'll send me your email address, I'll be happy to email that video instructions for that, your little free gift, and also the instructions over as well. So I, um, tonight, a lot of times I paint on a 16 by 20. Tonight I'm painting this cute little guy on a 12 by 12. And um, I do like to, especially for people when they're first starting out painting, I do like to offer them tracers or patterns to kind of go by. And, it, and until people get their confidence up or they can freehand it, I have a lot of I, I have a lot of friends who are super good at freehanding and just go, getting in there and doing it. Melissa, Justine, um, Sue, a couple people are so good at doing that. But um, but sometimes I know people like to kind of start with the pattern. So I usually do start with the pattern. So I have this pattern tonight. It's one we used at Christmas, obviously. It's a tree farm and has a Christmas tree in the back of it. So I bet you already had that figured out. So we're going to use this basic truck for our um, truck full of hearts. And then we're also going to do the same thing on St. Patrick's Day. We're going to put some clover in it. And then Easter, we're going to put some eggs in it. So I thought it would be nice to do it on the 12 by 12. So if you make a couple of them, you can um, have them kind of all together. I thought that'd be fun, but that's just me. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, um, is before I put the truck on, I'm going to do the background first. And for the background, I usually just use the bigger, like two inch or one inch household brushes. You can see they're, they're pretty beat up, but they definitely get the job done. So we, I like to um, do that. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the background. Um, I'm going to, you can see I kind of mixed together some blue and white for the background. I kind of like for it to be splotchy like that. I just kind of randomly do it. And I like to think it randomly ends up looking like what a real sky would look like. And the same thing for the grass um, in the background as well. So we actually love the color blue bonnet and it's an apple barrel paint. We love that for um, sky. So I'm gonna use some of the blue bonnet and then I'm going to just use some white. We'll kind of give that cloud look in there. So I'll put some white just right beside it. Left it open earlier. This is what happens if you leave your the tops open too long, then the little things jam up in there. So be sure to close the tops to your paints as you go along or they'll jam up like that. And then when you go to put it on there, finally, it'll squeeze out one big blob, which is what I'm terrified of right now. So I'm going to do this a different way so it doesn't just squeeze a big blob on there. Did it anyway, but we can always use white, right? Okay, so what I do for the background is I, I use the, the big brush. I get just the tip ends just a little bit wet, and then I just kind of sop off um, the extra water on there. And then I double load the brush. And what I mean by that is I put the colors side by side so I can put the brush in there together like that and kind of mix it together. And then I just start putting it on there. Now I've decided that the, the grass comes up about the, 
um, the letter L on the side of the canvas. So I'm going to bring the sky down about that far. Great. And then I just kind of start going back and forth across here. Make sure you get the sides of the painting. It is not complete without the sides painted. So we always want to make sure we get all around the sides with the with the paint as well. And that's another reason why using the bigger brush is nice because it covers this area really nicely. And if it feels like the paint's starting to drag, you can always put get some, uh, more water on it. And then just experiment. You can see that it really, you know, changes what the sky looks like if you kind of um, even wiggle it back and forth some to create some sky structure in there. And again, I'm going to go down about here. And as I go down, I'm going to try to make it just a little bit lighter down in here because the green is going to meet up with it. All right. And so when it's, well, it's still a little bit wet, you can still work with it, wiggle it in there, or you can make it thicker up here. And this particular one, we're not going to put, well, I'm not going to put a lot up in here. So if you wanted to add some darker colors up in here, and um, if you wanted to pounce it around on there and just see what it, what it looks like, it'll end up looking like either rain coming down or some just clouds in there. But otherwise you can just kind of brush it across there. Make sure it's not too wet, otherwise it'll take forever for it to dry. So make sure it's not too wet. But, and alternately, you can always use your hair dryer and um, bring out your hair dryer and dry it if you don't um, if you don't want to wait for it to get dry. Okay, so I'm good with that. I'm just going to rinse this brush off because I'm done with it. So I'm just going to rinse it and I'm going to dry it. And then I'm going to get it out of my way because the more things you have in your way, the more F you are to spill water all over everything. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do is the grass area down here. I want it to be a lighter um, green color down here because I'm going to go ahead and do the grass and then I'm going to paint the chalk over top of it. And so I don't want um, the darker grass to show through, which is what will happen if I don't paint it. A lighter green color. You can always paint the truck on it and the grass around it, but it just doesn't flow very well in the background if you do it like that. So I like to just um, put the background in first as much as possible whenever I can. Now I'm going to double load this as well. So I'm going to put the green on the other side of, and I chose a super light green. This is Ceram Coat. It's a little bit thicker than um, the Apple Barrel. And we're just basically going to do the same thing. I'm going to wet the brush a little bit and get the excess out. I'm going to grab, I'm going to double load it, which means I'm going to get two of the colors in there. And then I'm going to just start laying it down across here. And I'm actually going to kind of do like a double heart design because that's what's going to show in the background. It's going to be kind of like mountains back there. Okay. And if at all possible, in that middle part where your truck is going to go, try not to get the darker color in the air. But you can see, I just usually just wet it and just kind of put it on there. And it kind of takes its own form. It just kind of decides where it wants to go. So it's going to kind of look like mountains in the background. And then again, just make sure you get the sides done as well. Okay. And if it looks like it's too watery, you can also just kind of brush it off. Thinner color to go behind my truck. So it's not going to show through my truck, but I still um, think it's just a little bit too much for the truck. I'm done with this brush. So I'm just going to rinse it off and dry it and put it away and I'm going to get fresh water. All right. So I am going to just wipe a little bit of the extra out of the middle of here where the paint, where the truck is going to go so that all the green's not showing behind it because you won't be able to, um, to see that. So that'll look fine. If you um, uh, uh, 
like as well, you can do the same thing with the brush at some, um, some depth. And even with your paper towel, you can kind of pounce it on here and you'll see it starts forming all kinds of different little um, areas on there that make it kind of look like it really is a mountain back there or it really is a um, some grass back in there. So you can do that and then again, if it takes too long for it to dry, then you can always dry it with your dryer. Okay? And while I do that, I want to show you a couple other, I had, oh wait, I forgot to tell everybody. This is my beautiful, gorgeous engagement ring. I got engaged December 2nd. And I just wanted to show, I wanted to show everybody um, as I wave this around trying to dry it. When I first decided to paint the truck, I could not decide what color to paint it. I love black trucks. I love dark red trucks. I couldn't decide what color to paint it. And there were so many different options. And I figured everybody else would kind of feel the same way too. So, um, so what I did, I kept, I purposely kept the background, everything super plain, like I said, um, but I did paint a couple of different colors, just, um, just rough draft to just kind of show everybody some other ideas that you might be able um, to use as well. So let me show you those. I'm going to put three more. So, um, so I think dark purple drops are very cool. And so I just wanted to show everybody um, what it would kind of look like against the background if you did like A dark purple truck instead. Clearly, this could use some stretch. That's just kind of an idea of what purple would look like against the um, against that background. All right. So, so that was one of the colors. It'd be kind of cool to have a big pink heart here on this. It's not got a lot of highlighting on it. But I thought that was pretty and so this one um I thought pretty cool if it was on there with um with the dark red heart, it would be such a great contrast. And so I did one of those just to kind of show a sample of what that might look like on there. And then I was working on a black and red striped one. And I thought this would look cool actually once I did the stripes. I thought this would actually look cool with a checkerboard instead. And then I thought I should just stop and focus on one thing. And so I stopped after that. But I did just want to show you there's so many different ways that, that you could do it, especially this pattern can be um, can be changed up so many different ways. And then, um, can we see that? this back here? I don't know. So I was also working on a bigger one with a bigger background that didn't quite get finished yet. And um, this one is going to be probably the Easter one. And there's going to be Easter eggs kind of hidden all in the background. But it has, um, you know, you could put the tree on the back. You could put the tree on the back of um, the background of this one as well. Maybe have some hearts in the tree or some apples in the tree or something like that. But I did just want to show you those couple of other options that, that I had considered before I finally made myself focus and um, just settle on one design. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is trace the pattern of the truck onto the canvas. Now, this is the, like I said, this is our um, the tree farm um, pattern that we used at Christmas time. And I wanted to modify it some because at Christmas time when we did this, we did it um, in a 16 by 20. And so it's big. And so I wanted to modify it just a little bit. And so I kind of just clipped back the end of it, made it just a little bit shorter and not quite so tall. So I'm going to trace it a little bit differently. The um, graphite paper that we're going to use, graphite paper makes life so easy. 
So it has a slick kind of almost sticky side that's shiny and that should be the side that goes down. Okay. Now when you're you're tracing your um, when you're tracing your pattern, you don't want to go over it with um, an ink pen or anything like that. It'll usually after a while it'll it'll uh, ruin your pattern. It'll like dig through it and ruin your pattern. So I usually actually use um, a skewer, bamboo skewer, because has a, a sharp end but not too sharp of an end that it won't ruin it. Okay. So then I just put it down here. And keeping in mind that I know that my grass ended up over a little bit over here. Perfect. Then I'm just going to trace over it. I'm not going to trace the little details in there. I'm just going to trace the basic outline of the truck. But I definitely want to trace the tires because they kind of show me where the highlighting goes for um, the wheel well of the truck. This, can you hand me the other carbon paper because this isn't working really well, this carbon paper. This carbon paper did not do a fantastic job, Seth. I'm going to get another piece of carbon paper. Thank you. And clearly, this piece of carbon paper was for our 16 by 20. Some of it came through and some of it didn't, so I'm just going to line it up in there. Okay, let's try this one more time. Much better. Uh -huh. Oh, well, that's not really going to do very well. Okay. Ta da! There we go. Our perfect little truck tracer. And I don't need him anymore, so I'm going to put this over to the side. All right. So you can see that now I have the truck trace on there. It goes all along here. Here's the wheel and the back area there. So the, I'm going to go ahead and put down the um, beautiful, beautiful red color on the truck. such a pretty color red. This is called bright red. And no matter what brand you buy of the bright red, it's always so pretty. Let me get another paper towel. Okay. And so we're going to paint the body of the truck. And when we get to the uh, wheels, we're just, we are actually just going to kind of go around them. And that's fine because that's kind of the shape of the wheel well anyway. So I'm still going to get my brush wet and get the majority of the paint out of it. And then it was that was blue. All right, so I'm just gonna start right here at the top and go across. I'm using this angle brush for the first part of it, just because it really, it holds a lot of paint when you're painting the bigger areas like that.
and you can go around this wheel well nice and easy. And then we'll go back in and fine tune some of those areas. Don't worry too much about the perfection of it because like our Liz afterward back here that I shortened up. side of the heart. Okay. And then on mine, I decided a couple things that I did was I put um, some hearts kind of, you know, trundling off here, but you could put them on strings if you wanted to coming off of here. And um, I did put a little white cloud heart here because I'm in, up in heaven because I do have um, a Valentine in heaven. So I put a little white one up here. All right. So you can put your hearts wherever you want. So I know that I'm going to put the red one up. Inside, you can always go back and um, add a thicker, add a thicker, uh, another coat over top of it to thicken it up if it's not the way that um, that you like it. All right. So while we wait for that to dry, just kind of looking at it there. While we wait for it to dry, we are going to do the um, the wheels and. So I'm not really great at painting circles. So one of the things that I usually do 
when I'm doing the wheels is I put my paint, um, I use this same flat, um, flat brush here and I, cause it's just the right width for me. And I put one of my paint, um, bottles it, right here, kind of in the middle where I think the, the tire is supposed to be. And I paint around that and that gives me my circle. So that works, that's worked out good for me so far. So shake up the black and put some black right here. Not a lot, because the only thing we need it for really are those wheels. So we don't need a whole lot. I do always like to load both sides of my brush like that. And then just holding that steady, I just kind of go around the edge like that with my brush. It's a perfect little cheat. And then the inside of it's going to be the inside of the wheel area is going to be a different color. So pull it straight up, bam, kind of mostly circular. It does leave paint on the bottom of your um, bottle. So I just try to wipe it off on one of my other wet paper towels and then move it to my other side. And go around it again, load both sides. And go around. And the brush just kind of flows right around it too. So that makes it really nice, especially if you load it pretty good. Okay. And then again, it has paint all over the bottom of it. So you're going to want to wipe it off and leak it out of the way. Now I can see I got a little bit, uh, not quite a straight line there. I'm not looking for perfection. So I'm just going to kind of go in there and put it up just a little bit. You can make your, your wheel all the way next to your red paint if you want to, or you can kind of leave it like an open area like that. It's completely up to you. Um, and then I'm just going to rinse the brush and get the excess out of there. All right. And so I'm going to use a darker color red just for some of the highlight. It's called deep red. And this is a really pretty color too. If your, um, if your red that you put on your truck is thin and it's not the color you want, then this is a good time to check. And if you need another coat of paint, go ahead and put another coat of paint on there. But mine's fine. All right, and so I'm just going to use my, my darker color red. I'm going to mix just a little with my other color red, and I'm going to make a door. So I'm going to just come straight down here with the darker color red so that it's highlighted. So there's a door there, okay? And same thing on this side here. Now we have a door. All right, and I'm also going to go around the um, the wheel well with it, with it flat, go all the way around like that. And that kind of forms the um, wheel well. All right, and we'll do the other wheel well. Well, and this brush is the perfect size for it. And again, if you load it, it'll just flow right around the edge like that. All right, there's your highlights. And also we're going to do just a little thin line across the top of here where the hood kind of comes up like that. Okay. All 
All right, we need a door handle. So I'm gonna make mine red just cause I don't want it to be a focal point, but you could make it black or whatever color that, um, that you want to make it. On trucks, there's usually a, um, a runner right here that you step on. So I always do like to kind of put that little thin line across here, try to get some depth to it. And across the back of the bed of the truck and down the back there. All right, perfect. So now we can start adding some highlights and some other color um, hearts in there. I'm gonna wait to do the middle of the wheel just a little bit to let that dry just a little bit so that I don't end up glopping it all together. So I have this pretty, pretty pink color. It's called light pink. And we're gonna put um, a heart behind. This is a thinner, definitely a thinner paint. And um, the brand is my studio. So all the paints are a little bit thinner. So I've got my brush drier than I would usually make my brush, all right? So I'm just gonna kind of make my heart. It's gonna kind of overlap over the edge of the um, truck frame and it's going behind the red heart there, okay? So we're just gonna start it over here so it overlaps, then make a section and then it just kind of, it's kind of like a half heart because it's half hidden back there. The white heart is actually gonna go over top of it, a mine anyway, you can do yours different color if you want. So the interior paint of the pink one here doesn't have to be perfect. Because it is gonna be tucked behind the red and then the white on mine is gonna go over top of it. And then I'm gonna paint a pink heart up here And just kind of fill it in and then I'm going to paint a pink heart in the middle of the door all right so just load it it's going to be a little thin you're on mine uh, my my this particular color pink I'm using is super thin and that's absolutely fine I don't mind it showing through at all it just kind of gives it that rustic look So I am fine with that. And then I'm gonna use some of the pink and just do some, um, some other highlights. I'm gonna dry highlights. So I'm not gonna have a lot on the brush. And I'm just gonna kind of go along the top of the truck here, the edge of the front of the truck here. And this is just a matter of how much highlight you kind of want to put on there, all right? I'm gonna go, um, along the top edge of the wheel well here, kind of make it stand out some. I'm not looking for perfection because old trucks aren't anyway. So I'm just going to kind of go along, all along the edge here like that. And I'm going to again highlight along the edge of the, the truck bed back here. And I'm going to make it super dry and just kind of stroke it across here in general. And just put some little different little highlights in there to give it some depth and actually the same thing on, on the heart here. And a little heart up here. All right, can probably give this pink one another coat now. There we go. One thing with paint, you have to be, the good thing is with paint, if you do something, and I'm gonna dry my brush out, clean my brush out some, if you do something you don't like it, the good thing about paint is, guess what? You can paint back over it and do whatever, whatever you like with it, okay? You can always change it, but you have to wait till the paint is dry. Otherwise, if you're painting on paint that before it's dry, then you take the paint away and it doesn't do any good. Now, I had a pretty color purple. 
for my pretty color purple gold. Purple, purple. Found it. This is called Purple Iris. Very pretty. I'm going to use this a lot for the, in the springtime. You'll have to join us on Saturday night. We're painting Love on the Lookout. So it is an ocean with a cliff hanging over the ocean and a car on it. And there's a couple up there and it's a full moon. So you have to check that out and paint that with this. It's going to be lots of fun. It's adorable. All right. So I'm going to paint a purple heart here beside the um, red one. My red is not quite dry. So there we go. Okay. So I'm going to paint the purple heart over top of the red one here. Gorgeous color purple. It's going to be a fat heart. All right. And maybe I'll stripe him. I'm going to put a little pink on him. So I double loaded that one. Just to get some extra color in there. All right. My pink is not um, dry enough to paint my white over top of it, so I'm not going to do that yet. But I am going to paint a little. I'm going to paint a little white heart up here for my Valentine in Heaven. Just going to kind of pat that up there like it's. The cloud. Okay, and then I'm going to start uh, while that all of that dries. I'm going to start putting the um, hearts, the little pink hearts, all along the edge of the um, along the uh, the body of the truck. So the way that we do that is by using the end of whoops, forgot to I forgot to rinse my brush bad very bad bad way to take care of brushes so the way that we're going to do that is by using the end of the brush to do dots so i recommend that because the end of brushes all of them have like a different end some of them have a flat end some of them have a nice fat round end um and some of them will make smaller dots bigger dots so i recommend before you do it to kind of do it on your palette and the way that we'll do that is we dip the end of the brush one time in the paint one time on whatever you're going to paint and back in the um, paint and then back on the palette and then the heart, you're just going to pull down the middle. So I'm looking at it and it does look like this is going to be a good size for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. If yours doesn't make, um, doesn't accept the paint or it's a flat edge or a hollow edge, it's not going to work as well for you. So you might want to switch. All right. So I'm going to do one dip into the paint and then one on the truck back into the paint onto the truck. And I'm just going to pull down the middle together and there's a heart la, la, la. you could do all different color hearts on yours if you like i'm just doing pink on mine but you can make your hearts all different colors you can make your hearts all different shapes you can make them kind of puffy the more paint you put on it's going to puff up um you also want to really pull down on the middle of it to get that heart shape because otherwise quite frankly it ends up looking a little obscene if you don't pull down on the middle of it you'll do it once and you'll see the shape that you end up with that looks obscene and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about <laughs> all right so we're just gonna put a couple more hearts on there into the paint one time onto the palette into the paint onto the palette pull down in the middle perfect I like my fat hearts. My other one, I had skinnier hearts. These are fatter. I like these. Okay. Great. 
I like it, like it, like it. Maybe I'll put one more over here. I'm going to put another one here. Okay, I like my fat hearts like that. So while I, um, this pink heart, I want to put a white heart on top of it, but I see that it's still wet. So I'm just going to leave it there and we can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and write in the middle of my, I'm looking to make sure that this is dry before I start writing on. So I'm going to go ahead and write in the middle of my heart. And just remember if you don't have, I don't, I don't write really well when it comes to um, using a paintbrush and writing. I'm not real good at it. But for this instance, it doesn't really matter because it's supposed to look quaint anyway. So um, I just use the thinnest, smallest brush that I can find, make sure that it doesn't have any um, bristles hanging out sideways like Don King's hair, because then it's going to drag the paint across there. And the way that happens is when you are cleaning your brushes and you jam them down in your cup like that, it separates the bristles. So uh, it looks like this one's in pretty good shape. So what I'm going to do, what color am I going to use? I want to use red. And so I'm going to um, take the brush and then I'm just going to roll it in that darker color red and just roll it around on there. It doesn't hold much paint, so you'll have to um, load it a couple of times. Like I can see I'm only going to get one letter per roll. <laughs> So I'm going to put it in the paint and just roll it. Don't get it up in the ferrule, up in that um, metal part. And don't get your hand in your other little um, harps that you made. Beautiful. I love it. I'm going to see what kind of dots this makes. Okay, I like these dots, so I'm going to go along the edge of my heart into the paint on the palette, and the paint on the palette. If you don't do that, your um, dots are going to end up different sizes and different paint volume on there. And it's going to not look good. All right. Okay, and then I'm going to go around this heart with some little dots. But you can see, you can do anything you want. You can stripe these. You can put initials in all of them, on all of them, if you want. All right, and I am just going to put very carefully so I don't drag my hand through my painted heart. I'm going to do an X, roll it in your paint, X, O. we go. I like that. Okay. All right, I'm going to put my little white heart there. Dry. Not completely dry. I'm not going to put my little white heart there. I'm going to put I'm going to attempt to write love on here. I'm not great at writing. I'm not great at painting letters. I admire people who are. Not 
too bad. I can live with that. Okay. All right. I just think the dots perk everything up. They make everything so nice and bright and stand out. All right, we're almost done. As you can see, there's just so much you can do to this to personalize it. You can put somebody in the car. You can put packages in the car. You can put balloons in the sky. Um, you can put obviously whatever you want there, or you can put mine and my boyfriend's information on there if you want. All right, so I'm gonna put the white heart in the middle of the, um, the pink one like I was talking about, just cause it helps pop both of them off the back of the truck that way. And I just load both sides of it and then go on here and I have it halfway on the red heart and halfway on the pink heart and the bottom part of all the hearts are down in the truck there and so we'll let that dry and I'm going to mix up a little black a little of the white with the black well I'm going to mix a lot of white with the black because I want to make a silvery color unless you have silver then you can just paint the paint it because I want to do the inside of the wheels. I'm just going to go inside here, paint the inside the wheels. And again, this brush is so nice when it's loaded, it just kind of twirls right around like it has some sense. It, it's very obedient. All right, and then just kind of mix it to the color that you want. Oh, I got that kind of crooked there. Very crooked there, actually. I can hear my cat snoring. <laughs> okay. All right. Then let's see, I think the last thing I want to do is put some, I'll wait till that dries, I want to put some little hearts in there, but I want to put some little lines around the pink one because it's kind of hidden back there. So I'm going to put some little lines around it to kind of make it pop out of there. And I'm just going to do like little, little lines to kind of define it. There we go. And I'm going to put some little lines along the edge of the white one, too. That way it kind of separates them from each other. I saw a really cute one that had a big Valentine envelope there that was really, really cute, too. And I'm going to put a heart in the middle of the red one. Pull it together. Isn't that just the coolest, easiest thing ever? Okay, I'm going to take some of the red while that inside of the tire is drying, and I'm just going to go back around some areas. I want to go back around the outside of the heart here and just kind of highlight around it, make it pop off of the uh, canvas just a little bit. You don't have to go completely around all of it, but just enough to kind of make it pop off of there. Maybe a little behind the purple heart to make that kind of pop out of there. I hope when you guys do yours, you please, please send us and the pictures, we are always so thrilled when we get pictures of, of um, what people have painted. And um, I hope remember to send me a message with your email so I can send you the video and the tracer and everything for the two wine glasses. And remember to join us 
on Saturday night for the Love on the Lookout. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. And then just the last thing I'm going to do to mine is I'm going to put the hearts in the middle of the wheels. And you can you can do that if you want, or you don't have to on yours if you want to. You can put red dots all around yours if you want to. In the paint on the canvas, pull it down. That one ended up a little bit lopsided, so I'm going to fix that. And voila! I like to think it's mostly finished. Again, I didn't finish it totally and completely and put a lot of stuff on it because I'm hoping that everybody will um, make one and, and, and use their imagination and be creative and do their own thing with all their own colors and everything. And I'm hoping that you'll post it and send it to us. So thanks again for um, joining us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you guys again soon. I hope you enjoyed it.